Hey guys and gals, Vlad here with AVT Astro and today we are looking at the Cybon SV503-FF Apromatic Refractor. For those of you that might not be familiar, I run a little Astro blog called avt-astro.com and of course this YouTube channel, if you're not subscribed, please do consider subscribing. Over the last 25 years, I've had the privilege of owning over 100 scopes, more accessories than I can count. And having said all that, let's get down to looking at this beautiful scope. Alrighty guys, so here she is in all her beauty, right? So 70 millimeters. It is an F6.5. 7-8 uh, focal ratio on this guy. Um, it does have a retractable dew shield, you know, like many APOs these days. Uh, this guy does ship with the rings. It does come with the Vixen style dovetail. It comes with a very nice two-speed uh, rack and pinion focuser. So you've got, you know, the uh, rough uh, focus gear here. And then the fine focus knob here. Um, while we're looking at the focuser, I did want to point out real quick that there is a scale on there. Uh, so you could get you know to whatever focus and position that you want to and uh, there is a way to lock it down as well all right and having looked at the physical kind of aspects of the scopes what are you know kind of like the optical characteristics of it well the ff and the you know and the naming scheme of the scope stands for the field flattener that is built in on this so this is a quadruplet so basically there's two uh, elements in the front one of them is in the ed element which gives you a better color correction compared to an achromatic telescope uh, and then the field flattener is built in, making it a quadruple telescope, similar to the FSQ-106 that's sitting over there that, you know, kind of more or less pioneered this, you know, along with the NP-101 from Teleview. Alrighty guys, so gone over the, you know, kind of like the generals of the scope, you know, what is this thing useful for, you know, in general and real, you know, use uh, scenarios? Well, Saibon actually has a graphic for this, so let's refer to it. So you can obviously do the moon with this thing, you know, both the both photographing and do, doing it visually. You could do deep sky stuff, which is those two guys, and the plants as well. And actually, guys, uh, over the last couple of nights, so we've had some pretty good, you know, clear weather with a little bit of smoke issues from wildfires, unfortunately. Uh, but I've had the chance to thoroughly test this guy both visually and photographically for all this stuff. So having said all that, let's get outside and check out how this thing performs in the real world. All right, so first up, of course, is the moon. And of course, visually. <laughs> so for those of you guys that watch my channel, you guys know that I love visual. So here's some eyepiece projection of the moon. So overall guys, uh, the view is very nice of the moon, um, as you can see sharpness is pretty good on this, uh, I had no issues at all, secondary color was very, very well controlled, which is to be expected because this was only 33x with the 14mm eyepiece. Um, and then now uh, we're kind of switching over to the camera and then as you can see there's kind of some clouds rolling through the moon, uh, so this was actually a really cool effect uh, that you could even see on the screen here as the clouds are kind of rolling through them. Very cool uh, kind of effect. So now I am starting the uh, stack of the, um, of the moon. So basically this is live stacking, uh, taking a bunch of short exposures and stacking them on one on top of another to produce a better image if you're not familiar. Um, so yeah, and then uh, here's what the final result's gonna be after a few seconds. A very cool image, very sharp, um, I love it. Next up, of course, we have Saturn. So this is, um, so this scope, you know, guys, it's not optimized to do the planets uh, just due to the short focal length of it. So this is actually using a 4X Barlow 4X uh, Telev PowerMate to get this view of Saturn. Uh, which still turn out pretty cool, really, for such a small telescope. I like them. Alrighty, guys, and then the moment you guys were waiting for, of course, deep sky. So this is first image is M29. This is a uh, two-minute uh, EAA stack of it. It's just an open star cluster um, that has a pretty nice, uh, you know, star field around us in Cygnus, so kind of in the Milky Way. Uh, I just wanted to show that to you guys so you kind of get a sense for the field flatness which is actually for you know the very little that the scope costs is actually very good I enjoyed that 
Um, as you can see, stars do have a little bit of a secondary color around that, them. We will kind of get to that later. Uh, so next up is M31. This is a five minute EAA stack, which actually, you know, turned out, uh, looks pretty good to me. Um, I was still, you know, imaging this uh, with the moon out. That was nearly full at this time. And we had a little bit of wildfire smoke. So the transparency wasn't great, but um, you know, I just kind of wanted to give you an image scale of what you get with the scope with a really large object. I mean, there isn't very many objects that are larger than M31, so it definitely fits that. M31 with its full extent, uh, if you're not familiar, would uh, basically, you'd need to st uh, you know, put the moon side by side and you could fit six moons into it side by side it's how large it is so it's huge in the sky okay so you know it definitely fits that so it'll fit pretty much any object and they're so great you know for wide field type of shots uh so next up we have ngc 6888 which is the crescent nebula uh, this is one of my favorite uh, deep sky objects to image it's pretty challenging actually so i just wanted to do that this is another five minute stack um, and, you know, considering the conditions, it actually, you know, showed up uh, pretty darn well. And uh, let's transition into uh, kind of doing a little bit of a closer analysis of uh, images. Okay, guys, and here's a comparison of uh, the Crescent Nebula that I took with uh, um, 503, you know, the 70 millimeter. Um, on the right here, compared to the FSQ-106, so my normal imaging scope. Now guys, I do want to point out and make this very, very clear, okay? This is not a fair comparison at all. We're comparing, you know, my FSQ-106 that's uh, currently retailing for $7,400 with no accessories, not even including the rings, okay, to a $400 telescope or sub $400 telescope. But, you know, I, I do feel like, you know, since I imaged this recently and, you know, I have the images to compare, you know, I just want to show you guys what the difference is between a trolley premium scope and kind of more of the budget option, right? Okay, so uh, this, uh, this sub here, this is just a single five minute exposure. Um, this is the EA stack that, you know, we, we were just talking about. That's also five minutes. So they're both a total of five minutes. Um, uh, okay, so kind of, you know, just generally, um, this is not processed at all, by the way, guys. So don't like, you know, I know that this isn't like a beautiful image. That's not the whole point here. I just want to show you guys, you know, kind of the, kind of like the differences here. Um, you know, quite frankly, the nebula itself, um, you know, there's not too much of a difference. Uh, the sky condition, this was taken under a darker sky uh, with great transparency. This was taken kind of like in a little bit of a smoky sky with not as good of, uh, you know, the, the sky darkness is not as good here at my house either. Uh, so overall, I'd say the nebulosity itself showing up pretty well. Um, you know, zoomed out, this is 100% zoomed out. I'd say that there's not too big of a difference, but even here, you could see that the stars, right? Like the, all the, you know, the, the stars, they're kind of, you know, they're kind of more pronounced, right? So you kind of see them better. So now what we'll do is we'll just zoom in on the crescent on both of these. And let's check out what the difference is. So, I mean, check out, you know, like the, the big difference that I'll, I'll, you know, I can, uh, you know, see immediately is all the stars, right? They do have a little bit more blow to them. And that is due to the chromatic aberration, you know, and just not as good of color correction on the scope, which is to be expected, um, you know, again, sub $400 scope versus a $7,400 scope. So that's kind of the main difference. You can, there's software these days that'll kind of, you know, uh, take care of this for you and, you know, kind of minimize this effect. Uh, but yeah, so like as we zoom in, um, you know, this is a good example of the difference that you're going to be seeing. Is that you're just getting tighter stars. Uh, although I will say, um, I focus this one, you know, this image manually, right? I don't have autofocus here. I did have autofocus here. 
So my focus might have not been quite as good, but you know, just looking by the size of these stars, uh, I'd say I hit focus pretty well though. Alrighty guys, welcome back inside. So hopefully you enjoyed those demo clips of me using the scope both visually and for our astrophotography slash EAA. So to bring the ship home and kind of, you know, finish up the review, what do I think about the scope overall? Um, you know guys, uh, physically, I really have no complaints with this thing. I mean, for a scope that's under 400 bucks, this focuser is very nice. I mean, is it quite as smooth as like a, you know, a premium top of the line, you know, best you could give feather touch? I'd say with the coarse focus knob, you know, not quite as smooth. It does take a little bit more effort, although it's still very, very good though. Uh, the fine focus knob, I mean, if you were to blindfold me and put, you know, this, um, and let me uh, focus this uh, and the feather touch with the fine focus knob, I'd honestly have a hard time, you know, kind of telling the two parts. So anyway, having said that, I mean, the focuser for this price range, I'm very impressed with um the rings that it comes with you know they're decent you know overall person i'd prefer a little bit beefier rings but really for the you know weight that this thing weighs which is uh about 5.9 pounds so roughly six pounds you know by the time you get a little bit of stuff attached to it i mean i think these will do just fine i certainly didn't have any issues with actually using them i just you know usually prefer beefier rings personally um, so yeah, fin and finish is great. Uh, optical performance for visual use, you're really, I mean, unless you're like really into, you know, staring at bright stars at high power, such as Vega or Sirius like that, yeah, you'll see some purple fringing around, uh, you know, those stars visually. For general um, wide field use, which is, you know, what I would use this for, you're using low powers anyway. So uh, you're really not gonna see any of that purple fringing at all. So uh, visually awesome, awesome, awesome scope for wide field view. So let's say if you have like 12 inch daub, you want a secondary scope that's gonna give you those really wide field of views that the 12 inch daub can't give you. Awesome scope for that. Okay, moving on to astrophotography. You know, you saw the examples that I was able to capture, um, you know, with the scope uh, kind of over the last couple of nights. Uh, what do I think about it? And just, you know, just overall. Uh, overall, guys, the field flatness on the scope with, you know, a sensor size that's not, you know, radically big. So something like a ASI 294MC Pro or like the 533 sensor, you know, like the, those kind of mid-range sensor sizes. Uh, this thing has, you know, very good, you know, field correction. So, you know, thumbs up on that. Uh, color correction wise, that's uh, that's kind of like the only downside with you know this particular unit is that you do get a little bit of bloating on stars, you know, from secondary color. All right, and final verdict, guys. I mean, for 400 bucks or under 400 bucks, really. I mean, it's a pretty neat little package for either wide field view visual use or if you're just starting out uh, in astrophotography on a budget, you can certainly get some really good results with this thing. Uh, so I really enjoyed using it. Uh, so anyway, thank you guys for watching if you guys have any questions comments or anything like that please leave them in the thing below if you're not subscribing and please do consider subscribing and i'll see you guys in the next video bye